Okay, so in this video, we're going to try and find the mean by using a normal distribution. So I've gone back to 2009 and I found a question about omelettes, which kind of works. So we're going to use that as our main thing to be able to work this out. So we've been given the fact that uh, the weights of emu eggs are normally distributed. That's always a nice clue to tell us that, you know, we're doing a normal distribution. We know that 90% of the time, the weight of the final object is more than 752. Assume all other ingredients are negligible, so that's basically saying we ignore them. Given the weight of emu eggs have a standard deviation of 21.3 grams, calculate the mean weight. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw my normal distribution. Now I always do this as a really shabby drawing on here. So let's see if I'm any better today. Not really, that is absolutely terrible. You'd struggle to identify that hat to be bell shaped, wouldn't you? Let's try again. And if not, we're just gonna roll with it. So I'm gonna try a different technique this time. And I'll go back to there, and I think that's going to be about as good as I'm going to get. So I don't know my mean, which is there, but I do know that 90% of the time, so if I go over here, 90% of the time, it is bigger than 752 grams so if i was to go to my calculator i'm going to go to menu because i want to get to the point where i can go to stats and i'm going to go to distribution and i'm going to go to normal and i know i'm doing an inverse normal and my problem is it wants a standard deviation and a mean and i haven't got those so what i need to do is i need to use the standard normal so let's go back to black and the standard normal has a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. Now the difference being when I get through all of this, I'm not working out a value that's on my x-axis. I'm working out a Z value. And if I go to my tables, all of these are values from the standard normal. Okay, so that's basically what they've got there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remember that I'm gonna tell my tau is to the right. My area is 0.9 because I need to leave it as a decimal, not as a percentage. My standard deviation is one and my mean is zero. And when I calculate that, I get a Z value. So Z equals, I know this one's gonna be negative. It's gonna be negative 1.28155. So negative 1.28155. 155, 155. Okay, I've got more decimal places there than I need, which is perfect. And now we're gonna go back to our formula sheet. In our formula sheet, you have this at the top of your thing. Now, if you look at that, we now know three out of four things because we know our z value we just calculated that we know our x that's our 752 we know our standard deviation the only thing we don't know is our mean so we can use that inside our equation so z equals x minus mu divided by sigma a fairly rubbish mu as well okay so if i pick out all the information i've got now i get minus 1.28155 equals 752 
minus my mu, which I still don't know, divided by 21.3. Now, at this point, depending on whether you're good at algebra or not, you can go, you can rearrange that and solve, you know, take, multiply both sides by 21.3, and then go 752 minus whatever you have on this left-hand side equals the mean, or you can go to the equation function, and you can go to solver, and let's delete that one, so I can start again, so it's minus 1.28155 equals, so equals is shift and decimal point. I've got to put some brackets in, 752 minus, now I can't put mu in as a variable, so I'm going to use x, and I'm going to divide by 21.3. And it comes up with an answer, but that isn't actually an answer. It's just the first guess. We now have to press solve for it to give me the right answer. And it is telling me that mu is 779.3. So that is mu is 779.3. And I better include the units and the units will be grams. Okay, and that's how you can do it. Now, of course, I could have done my solving and I would have got exactly the same answer. Uh, but solver, it seems like a more convenient way of going. Okay, so the next video will be about doing exactly the same process and following exact same steps to work out the standard deviation. So until next time.